My name is Jennifer. I'm 37 years old. My husband Vince is a normal office worker, and I'm a nurse. We don't have children, so I'm not particularly busy after I come home after work. The clinic I work at doesn't have night shifts, so I have plenty of time for myself. When I get home, I clean the house, do laundry, and prepare dinner. Vince comes home at around 7 p.m., the same time as dinner is ready. We have aperitif while complaining about our work, and then have dinner as we talk about the day. Vince is in charge of washing the dishes. I wipe them up as he washes and put them away. We continue talking about this and that as we work together. After that, we relax doing whatever we want. Ben sometimes works on his PC, plays games, or surfs the net. I read, surf the net, or check social networks. Sometimes we watch TV together. Our routine goes by pleasantly. We have been married for 12 years. And there were times when I felt sad about not being pregnant. I've come to think that it's not so bad to grow old as we spent such a peaceful time together. I thought it would continue for a long time, but the change came suddenly. It was when I returned home after staying with my parents for a few days. The moment I entered my home, I felt something strange. It was trivial, but an obvious anomaly. The arrangement of shoes in the shoe closet had changed. The way the flowers in the living room were arranged, the dishes were put away in the wrong place. Small things, but big discomfort. It was weird. The worst was my room. The placement of cosmetic and clothes were slightly different. Vince and I had our own rooms, and we rarely went into each other's room. Even if we did, we never moved things without permission. I highly doubted that he would touch my cosmetics anyway. Have you been in my room? Hmm. Of course not. Why?、Mm, never mind. When I asked him. He looked puzzled and denied it. I didn't think he was lying from the way he looked. If things were missing, it couldn't have been a theft. But nothing seemed to be taken, just rearranged. An inexpressible quizness arouses inside me. My parents lived far away, and my mother had not been well around the time. She pretended to be well, but. It seemed that her hips and legs were getting weaker, and she was granted a caregiver at home by her insurance. A helper visited her regularly, but she was a little timid, so she couldn't ask her helper to do too much. On the other hand, my father, who was still in good health, couldn't do any housework because of his old way of thinking. He was trying his best, but it was going to take him a while to be able to help my mother. So I visited them regularly to help out and gave him housework. I had to stay at their house every time as he was far away. Then sent me off without a complaint, so I took it for granted. The feeling of discomfort I had that day lasted for a while. Whenever I went to my parents' house for a few days and came back, I noticed an unusual air in the house. Vance usually did nothing around the house except washing dishes after dinner, but ever since that day, it seemed he had been doing laundry or cleaning while I was gone. Well, I do my fair share, he said. So, but then when I asked him. I'm almost out of detergent. Can you put in the refill? Oh,、um, where's the detergent? He supposedly did his own laundry, but he didn't know where it was. 
How was that possible? I tried to think he washed his clothes with nothing but water, but they smelled like Febreze softeners. By the way, the Febreze softener was in the same place as the detergent. Obvious lie. I didn't have any hard evidence, but clearly he was suspicious. Every time I went to my parents' house and came back, the house was like spot the difference. When I was thinking about putting on a hidden camera, Van's attitude started to change. First of all, he stopped doing anything around the house. He didn't even wash the dishes after dinner. At first, he said he was busy, but he didn't do any work. He just sat on the couch, playing with his cell phone. When I asked him to help me, I can't. I have something to do now. He snapped at me and then went back to fiddling with his phone. He also started coming home late, saying he had to work overtime. One day, I really needed to ask him about something, but he didn't pick up his phone. I reluctantly called the office and was told that he got off on time. I asked him about it when he came home. I went out for a drink with a client. I wasn't just hanging out, but I lied because you were fuzzy. It's your fault. With a clinking of his tongue, he somehow made me the bad guy. From that day on. He said he was going out for drinks with his acquaintances and didn't come home until late at night. Sometimes he went directly to the office instead of coming home. Furthermore, his business trips increased. I was skeptical if it was true. He spent much less time at home. We barely talked, and cold air filled the house. I tried to improve the situation by starting the conversation. I can't talk right now. I'm busy. We'll talk later. He gave me a cold shoulder, and days went by without having to exchange a word with him. When I gave it a try again one day, you know, today at the playground. A playground? Why do you go there? It's not a place for a childless woman like you, is it? Why do you have to talk like that? It's the playground in the park. I usually walk by. There are lots of people who use the park for a walk without kids. Walking? It's nice to have free time, isn't it? You're taking it easy while I'm busy at work. It's just a metaphor, and I'm just passing through. Shut up. That's enough. Listening to the barren woman gives me a headache. Excuse me. My objection was ignored, and he retreated to his room. I was confused by the remark he made. We had discussed as a couple that we would let nature take its course, and that if we couldn't have a child, there was nothing we could do about it. He had become completely cold, and I was left alone to tears. Then one day, a bomb dropped on me. I was working at a clinic as usual. I worked in an OB/GYN department at a private hospital, where almost all the patients were women. A young woman, who was a first timer, ran up to me in the waiting room. I knew she had just found out she was pregnant. I was about to tell her that she needed to be more careful in the early stage of pregnancies, when she grinned and looked into my eyes. Are you Jennifer? I was surprised to hear her call my name. All of the staff members wear name tags on their chests, but I had forgotten to put mine out of pocket. So how did she know my name? When I was perplexed, she smiled and said, "I'm pregnant. Congratulations! Thank you. The father of the child is your husband, by the way. I beg your pardon. I'm pregnant with Ben's child. 
please leave him, okay? Excuse me. It was so abrupt, leaving me unable to say anything else. She paid the bill and left quickly. I was completely aghast by what just happened. When I got home that day, I questioned Vince, who usually came home on time. A girl came to my work today, saying she's pregnant with your child. Huh? What the hell? What are you talking about? That's exactly my question. Are you having an affair? Are you accusing me? Do you have any proof? You're letting her in my room, aren't you? Every time I came back from my parents' house, I sensed something strange. That doesn't mean I'm cheating on you, right? The patient who came in today knew my name. She said she was pregnant with your child. When the child is born, we can do a DNA test. I'm sure it come back with a very compelling result. He fell silent, and then let out a big sigh. Ugh, I'm busted. Mary's been reckless. So you admit it? Okay. Yes, I've been cheating on you. Do you have a problem with it? I felt as if my world fell apart when he became defiant. Do I have a problem? Of course I do. It's your fault that I cheated on you in the first place. What the hell? What do you mean? You are barren. You work in OBGYN. Why don't you at least get fertility treatment? We decided together to let nature take its course. Even if that's the case, it's not my fault. It's you who can't get pregnant. You might be the reason why we can't have kids. That's possible. That my girlfriend is pregnant now. I felt miserable and devastated. His terrible comments made me burst into tears as I argued with him. Anyway, I'm divorcing you. Get out of my house asap. Oh, at least give you alimony. He walked out of the house, leaving me no choice. I felt so much pain inside and could do nothing but lie on the bed and cry. It was all a blur of what happened after that. When my mind came around, I was on the train back to my parents' house. They were surprised by my sudden arrival late at night, but welcomed me in. They stayed with me quietly until I calmed down. I was grateful to feel their empathy and love that I cried until there were no more tears. After I calmed down. I told them everything. I was able to sort out of my feelings by talking about them. By the time I was done, I felt relieved. My parents advised me to do whatever made sense to me, which pushed me forward. A month later, I was sitting in a cafe with Vince and his girlfriend in front of me. When I asked him to meet me, she offered to come along. I was planning to invite her anyway, so it saved me the trouble. I put a file in front of them. They were the divorce papers and alimony. By the way, there was my lawyer sitting next to me. Hi, I'm Mary, pregnant with my Bubba's child. The same woman who spoke to me at the clinic cheerfully introduced herself. She was young and carried a girlish hair around her. I mean, Baba. I wondered if this kind of girl was his taste. He looked grumpy, in contrast to the jovial girlfriend with a big smile. Why do I have to pay alimony? I wondered how he thought he could get away without paying it. You said you would, right? I'd rather charge you for it. I cheated on you because you couldn't get pregnant. It was upsetting to see his unapologetic attitude, but it was a waste of energy to get angry at someone like him. 
with an awkward smile on my face. I presented the documents I had prepared. After consulting with my lawyer, this is the standard fee. Please pay it in the lump sum. Then I will never bother you guys again. What a greedy bitch! What the hell is this amount? What's wrong with it? I've quoted you a fair price. No shit! It's too much. Even thought I got her pregnant. I knew he would protest when he saw the amount. He's right. We are going to have a baby. How can you treat us so awfully? I wondered if Mary had flowers blooming in her head when she foolishly joined it. She seemed to be oblivious to the fact that she stole my husband and destroyed my family. It wasn't that I didn't feel annoyed at her attitude, but my laughter outweighed my anger. I grinned without hiding the giggles that welled up. I know having a baby is a lot of work, but I won't divorce you unless you pay me this amount. That's insane! I've told you many times. I'm pregnant with this child. Please leave him as soon as possible. But you're the third woman, you know. What do you mean? I gave her the truth with a smile on my face. She looked baffled by what I had just said. I didn't miss the face of Vance turning pale. I wasted no time and showed them multiple photos. These are pictures of his affair. There are two others beside you, right, Vance? I hired a private detective and found out that he was having a three-way affair. That's a lie. Mary immediately denied it. That's called her cheating partner number one. Look, he's lovey dovey with you in this picture, but he's also holding hands with this woman. Here's another picture of him entering and leaving the motel with another woman. Cheating partner two and three, looking intimate with Vince. No matter how hard I tried to think otherwise, they didn't think like friends. Mary turned pale in front of the photos. Vince looked like he was going to throw up. Baba, what's all this? It's not what you think. They are just friends. You hold hands with your friends and go to a motel room with them. I'm just. Shaking hands in this one, and this is going to a motel to talk about work. He was flustered to make excuse when questioned by Mary. If that was a handshake, I wasn't sure in which custom. They were almost arm in arm. And what kind of meeting needed to be held inside a motel room? You're the only one I love. It's true. While he was desperately justifying himself, I raised my hand to signal. Immediately thereafter, the people seated behind us stood up. The moment they turned to look at us, Amy, Julie, Vance shouted, "What the hell are you guys doing here?" Oh, I called them. What? I smiled at horrified Vance and looked into his eyes, which were almost popping out of the sockets. Wait, what? Are they the same people in the pictures? Yes, I invited cheating partners number two and three. I beamed at Mary, who was totally confused. You, oh my God, oh. The detective was terrifying good. He checked all the backgrounds of his girlfriends. It cost me a lot of money, but I had no regrets. I got to see Vance's dumb face right in front of me now. That was enough for me. Didn't you tell me that you were single? Didn't you tell me you were in the process of a divorce and that you were separated? 
Van's face was a mixture of panic and confusion, as he was confronted by his cheating partners number two and three. You worked overtime every day, went on frequent business trips, and went out on weekends. I thought you were pretty hands-on with one partner, but I'm amazed that you had three. It was really unexpected, and I was beyond angry and astonished. No, no, this is all wrong. Nothing's wrong here. You were cheating on me with three women. That's why the alimony is at this amount. Do you understand? All of them have admitted to having an affair with you. You can't get away with it. You will pay exactly this. I banged on the table, and Vance jerked his body up. He was white as a ghost and covered in the cold sweat. Boba, I'm your true love, right? I was the only one you were serious about, wasn't I? Pout faced Mary pressed him. Before he could say anything, with trembling lips, the other women closed in. You said you were going to marry me next year, didn't you? That was three days ago. You were going to continue our relationship if you didn't get caught, weren't you? Well, that's.、Uh... You said something similar to me too, didn't you? You were about to finalize your divorce, and we should go on a trip afterward. Were you planning to continue with them even after our child was born? Are you kidding me? Vance was shrinking smaller and smaller. Guess what happened afterward? You cheater! Smacked by cheating partner number two. You piece of shit! Another one by number three. You traitor! And the final one by Mary. He was slapped. Beautifully, three times in a row. It wasn't even the season for snow, but I laughed at the glorious red cheeks on his face. The rest of the meeting went very smoothly. He was in a state of despair after being confronted by four women, including myself. We had abandoned him. He was out of his mind. But he easily signed the divorce papers and agreed to pay alimony. As for the three cheating partners, I originally wanted to find a way to suit them, but I changed my mind in the end. Number two was unaware that he was married. Number three thought he was getting divorced soon and was waiting for the day to come. They weren't in a serious relationship. Both of them apologized profusely to me. I couldn't blame them too much. I still wanted to find a way to charge Mary with something, but as she was pregnant, a nurse part of me didn't want to put her under any more strain. It didn't mean that I forgave her. Her unborn child was innocent, and I was just thinking of its future. The girls, especially Mary. Showed a great distrust in men after it was all over. I was skeptical that they could find happiness in the future. Mary's life was going to be very difficult from then on. She didn't want to marry Vance anymore, but still wanted to have a baby. Raising a child on her own was going to be the hardest path imaginable. It would be her redemption. And I decided to be okay with that. Six months after my divorce was finalized, I'm back to my normal, peaceful life. I continue to work while helping my parents at home. Occasionally, I receive a call from Vince. Apparently, his savings are gone, paying alimony to me. And then there are the child support payments to marry. I hear that he is having a hard time making ends meet. At work, the rumor of the three timing affair spread throughout the company. His coworkers look at him with dismay, and he's made to feel very ashamed. As a result, 
He's been making a lot of mistakes and has fallen down the career ladder. His parents were mortified by him and disowned him, and he is now living a lonely life. On top of his endless complaints about them, he used to text me, "You're the only one that comes to mind when I'm in real pain. I'm sorry. I want to start over with you. I'm begging you." I used to just ignore him, but the text kept coming in more and more. It was so annoying that I blocked him. I feel refreshed after cutting contact with him. I'm still working in an OB/GYN clinic where all kinds of stories are born. I'm absorbed in my work, but suddenly a thought comes to my mind: if I have a chance to be with someone again in the future. I would like to create my own story. Until then, I continue to support my patients.